Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna go over disassembly, reassembly, and tuning of your zipper. And we'll also go over the installation of the upgrade parts to turn your zipper into a version 1.1 for all you drop one folks. So the only thing you'll need for this is the two millimeter hex key that came with the ballast song. Um, in this video, I'm gonna refer to the top handle and the bottom handle. So this is the bottom of the ballast song. It's the side with the logo on it, and it's also the thicker side. So uh, the bottom is the thicker side here, and you're gonna start with the bottom of the ballast song down so that these screws at the base of the handles are exposed, and I'll just unscrew them one by one. Now it's time to unscrew the hex nuts at the pivot. So I'm just gonna pick it up, turn it over, and start unscrewing these. Again, one by one, I'll do both of them. I'll leave the pivots in, and then I'll just rest this back down. Take the hex nuts off. And we can just gently lift up the handles and they should come right off. You'll notice that they might be stuck to the, the bottom of these handles or right here. These are the red compression washers. These are actually just spares. It's a spare tire. So when we're assembling, you can actually just remove them, put them in a Ziploc bag, uh, or you can keep them where they are. But they're, they, having them in or out does not affect the function or performance of the ballast hung. So at this point, your ballast hung looks like this. Um, I'm just gonna gently lift off the blade and then dump these parts out. So this is really the most disassembled you'll ever need to go in most cases. I'm not gonna mess with the bearing assembly underneath the blade that are still in the pivots um, for an assembly like this. Uh, we're gonna do it just to be thorough in case something pops out for you. Um, but before we do that, I wanna highlight in the blade, there's two race washers. And these race washers are, are slightly different than some of the other race washers in the ballast song. So if you compare uh, the race washers that were inside the handles versus these, you'll see The race washers in the blade are have this slightly flatter section around the hole. And if you look closely, it kind of makes it look like the raceway is a little narrower, but it's pretty easy to tell. My camera might not be focusing on it, but this section is just flatter and that's how you know it goes in the blade. The race washers that are a little more rounded, those go in the handles. And that is important because there are different diameters. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll set those aside. I'm gonna take my new blade, the version 1.1 blade, and I'm just gonna pop out these race washers. It's important I use the same ones and I'm just gonna pop them into the new blade. And they should just pop right in. If you feel any resistance, I would just put it face down on a table and press it's very important that these race washers are seated properly. They have to be flat, set inside the blade. So at this point, normally I would just toss this back on and reassemble, but to be extra thorough, in case something happens weird with you guys, I'm just gonna dump all mine out so we can start from scratch. So a full assembly, I would start by putting the pivots into the bottom handles. It's the thicker handles. And then I'd put one compression washer on each one. It's very important you don't double up the compression washers. 
Don't use the spares and put two in there. And now, I'll sort through my race washers and I've got the two correct ones, the flatter ones and the blade, set that aside. And then there should be two additional flatter ones. I'll just set those aside for now. The remaining four here are all the rounder ones that have the slightly wider raceway. And I'm gonna put each of them onto the pivot with the raceway facing up. I'm then gonna take a bearing. Each bearing has a smooth side and this open side. We're gonna go smooth side up, open side facing down, and just slide a bearing onto each pivot. Now, those two race washers, the remaining two race washers that have the flatter surface, we're gonna slide these onto each pivot with the races facing down. So the flat side of the washer should face up. Just slide them down. Now we'll take our blade with the races facing up and we'll just slide it onto the pivots. And I'll gently push down to make sure the bearings are seated properly. At this point, I'll make sure my Zen pins are installed in the holes. Good to go. You can see one of my hex nuts that I use as a weight fell out, so I'll just make sure I have the weights configured the way I want them. And if I choose to put the spare tire compression washers in here, I would do that. I keep mine out. Now, pick up the other bearings. This side, we're gonna go the smooth side of the bearing facing down. You always want the smooth side of the bearing facing the blade, so the open side is facing up. Then we'll take the remaining two race washers and just put them raceway facing down, smooth side facing up. And then we'll put one red compression washer on top, just like that. At this point, if the weights are configured the way you want it and you've assembled it in such a manner, you're ready to uh, put your handles back on. So if you're just doing a simple reassembly, we'd put these handles back on. I'm upgrading this one to the version 1.1, which is why it has the new style blade. You can see it's uh, reinforced compared to the old one, and it also has the wider uh, Zen nipple to increase the handle gap. So I'm not gonna use these anymore, but I will take the screws out. So we won't use these, they're done. Here are the version 1.1 handles. The main difference is they have uh, a pocket recessed here to so that the reinforced blade will not cause any blade rub. So now I'm just gonna slide each handle on gently um, and I kind of just wiggle it on and it should just slide right on. One of the things I'll check is I'll, I'll peek right in here in this hole and make sure that red compression washer is seated properly. You don't want it folded up inside or or hanging out you really shouldn't be able to see it so if you see something folded in there that that could affect the performance so just make sure that everything's flat and i'll just put on the other handle now just kind of wiggle it on and same thing my compression washer i don't see it it's not folded in on itself so good to go now i'm going to take each screw and I'm just gonna screw each handle in. And I'll just stop when I feel light resistance. This does not need to be super tight. If you over tighten it, you could damage the plastic. All right, a little bit of resistance, I'm gonna stop. At this point, I'll get my hex nuts ready. I'm gonna pick one up and seat it in the hex pocket here at the pivot. And I'm just gonna gently push down, pick up the balisong, rotate it like this. 
and I'm just gonna screw that hex nut in. You might, what I like to do is I like to go lefty-loosey first to make sure everything's aligned nicely and then start screwing. And we're not, this is not the tuning, so just stop when you feel light resistance and then we're gonna do the other one. We will perfect the tuning after this step. I'm just pushing that hex nut into the pocket. You can see it's a little tilted, so I'll push up, try and reseat it. Lefty-loosey, and then righty-tighty. And I'll stop when I feel slight resistance. Okay. At this point, I'll open the ballast on. Here's your new handle gap, by the way. I'll open the ballast song and I'll do uh, a quick play test. So the zipper at the pivots should, in a, in a perfect tune, should have zero play. If you do a handle play test, you'll see play um, due to the flex of the plastic, but there should be zero play at the pivot. So I actually have some play, so I'm gonna tighten up the pivots just like a half a turn, maybe a quarter turn, and I'm gonna test again and now I've got I'll just hold it at the second ball here and I'll test and I feel no play. It's a very tight lockup. Again, if you do your blade play or handle play test here, the material does have flex, so that'll have play, but there should be no play at the actual pivots. It should all be caused by the flex of the material. So that feels good to me. Um, you basically want it as tight as you can while still having freely rotating handles. So now I'm going to Bring the blade into one handle and just hold it like that. Bring this up, one handle, and just let gravity do its thing. And you can see this is a little tight, a little sticky, so I'm gonna loosen it about an eighth of a turn, just a smidge, and I'm gonna repeat the test until I'm happy with it. It's still a little sticky, so I'll just do a little looser and then repeat the test. And that feels pretty good to me kind of where I like it. And then I'll just make sure it's not too loose. Nope, still feels perfect. And let's do the other handle. So I'll grab the other handle, bring the blade up into it, hold this up and release. And that's very sticky, it's too tight, over tightened. So I'm just gonna loosen it a little bit and then repeat the test. Still a little sticky. So I'm gonna loosen it another eighth of a turn little looser, still a little sticky. That's pretty good. So that feels good to me. It's kind of where I like it. And I'll do one last play test and everything feels nice and tight. So now I know it's tuned properly and it's ready to flip. There's one last thing though, which is the new bite marker. This is a TPU bite marker. It's a rubbery polyurethane. And it has the Zippy logo. And it also has these ridges on the inside that catch the jimping to prevent it from sliding off. I know that's a common complaint with uh, silicone bite markers. So what I'll do is you can choose whatever side. You, you don't want the logo on the side because the ridges are on the other side, so you want either the logo facing up or the logo facing down. I like to do here, cover up that screw, and I'll just slide it on until the ridges align, and I can feel it's really secure. This is not gonna slide off accidentally. I'm gonna have to peel it off. Uh, and the blade and the bite marker have clearance. So that's it. You've disassembled your zipper, you've installed the 1.1 upgrade path, you've reassembled it, you've tuned it, and you put on the bite marker. You're ready to rock and roll. Thanks guys.